His first one in 12 years. Amazing game balls for Hertz and Kelsey. Eagles outscore the Packers 40 to 33. Such a fun game. Such an offensive fireworks. Everyone's saying offense is down. McAfee last week, offense is down. Not on Sunday night, baby. Not in front of those Eagles fans uh, on Sunday night football. I will say, mm, there's, there's like a list in my head, a working, and if you think I'm taking this hat off, I'm not taking this, there's no way I'm taking this hat off with what's under here if I take it off. Uh, but we are kicking the stigma, we are talking Colts and Steelers later, but when it comes to the Sunday night football game, I will quickly say, there's a short list of players, NFL personalities that I want on the program. And I don't know who I want more than Jason Kelsey at this point. And I've always been a Jason Kelsey fan. We all know he's a personality. He's an incredible player, a guy with a lot of integrity uh, in the National Football League. But what he's doing on on the, I think, number one sports podcast is, that exists with him and his brother Travis, and what he's, you know, what they had, they had Jalen Hurts on the other week. And just to see the camaraderie between them and Jalen Hurts saying, oh, Jason's, you know, I love Jason. And Jason saying, I'm not coming out of retirement and mulling coming back, or, or not, not that he was retired, but he was considering what he was going to do with his future. Jason, you know, Jalen Hurts is the guy. Jalen Hurts is the reason that he's back there and they are performing so well. It is hard to not stand hard to not stand them for a Super Bowl journey. Then Niners NFC Championship game, I can't think of what would be more fun than that. And those Eagles. So Jason Kelsey, please come on the show. I need to know about the record. I need to know about the Christmas thing. We need to talk about like a million things. Uh, and, and we are supportive of you. We have Lane Johnson on. It's your turn to join the program. Okay, so these Eagles. Marissa McBride's Eagles are now 10 and one and well in control of the one seed in the NFC, kind of. The NFC is kind of wild right now. Now, Aaron Rodgers knocked out of the game in the second half with a rib injury. They were saying oblique, but it's a rib injury and he's gonna undergo more tests before we can determine whether or not he'll be back next week. And at this point, between the thumb fracture and this, we're going to talk to James Jones about it. I think the team and he should really think about going to Shutty Town. Shut it down. But he said last night he does want to be out there as long as the team is mathematically alive. Jordan Love, though. The plot thickens. Brilliant job filling in, nearly bringing the Packers all the way back. He owned those throws. Ooh, some mustard on those. It was great. And we'll get to the Packers side of things with James in, in a minute. I do want to give the Eagles all the love they deserve here. And let's do that, guys. Uh, let's go. Let's do it. Here you are seeing it. Uh, Jalen Hurts, brilliant, becoming the fourth ever quarterback ever to put up 150 in the air and on the ground in the same game. My good. He couldn't get 40 plus for me for that parlay I had the other week, but he put up 150. That's cool. Uh, the Eagles rushed for a ridiculous three. I sat next to a Packers fan for this one. He was like, 363 yards. Where was their own defense for the Packers? That's not what we're celebrating, though. We are celebrating, and I mean, they had been solid against the run, so I don't know what happened, but it was all about Hurts and Miles Sanders, a confidence builder for Miles Sanders. You love to see it. And Hurts peeled back the curtain to reveal the secret behind the offensive outburst. I ran and they couldn't get me. <laughs> He's so scary. Oh my gosh, I love him. In all seriousness, uh, this was the Eagles team I was hoping to see last night. They've hit some speed bumps over the last few weeks. They hadn't quite looked like themselves, but I think they put all those questions to bed with an all-around incredible bright light Sunday night performance. And when the offense is clicking like that, Who's beating them? Who's be and can the offense click like that against the best defense in the league in the Niners? I don't know. McBride thinks she knows. Look at can we show Mc look at McBride. McBride was in Philly. I was. Did you watch us on a plane? Yeah. How did that go? I mean, it was great. I was, I was, so was it great? That sounds awful. No, I, I did my best. McBride was on a tarmac for nine hours yesterday, last night. She rolled in wearing this uh, this gorgeous jersey, little Kelly Green for your morning here. And I don't know if anyone in this league is beating those McBride Eagles. Uh, they have a tough test, though, ahead next week against the Titans. Ooh. All right, we got some big takeaways here. We didn't need to be anybody but Mike White. We didn't need to turn into the greatest show on turf. We just needed, uh, we just wanted him to play within himself and play efficient. I thought he did that. 315, three touchdowns, that was probably a little bit better than that. Show on turf. I mean, how did, like, just what he was able to do, and also in the elements. Um, yeah, no, the, especially in the elements. It was, uh, um, like I said, he 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 did he he made the easy look easy, and that's. Uh, uh, I thought he did a really good job with that. So. Here are my takeaways. Sala, we see you. You're uh, effectively, well, uneffectively, but ineffectively, downplaying things a bit, trying to keep the Mike White hype train from getting completely out of control. 
But you're in New York, and there's no denying that your quarterback was absolutely brilliant, leading the Jets 31-10 dismantling of my Chicago Bears uh, in wake of Zach Wilson's benching. New York now in the playoff picture. They're sitting there chasing wild card action at 7-4. Gang Green has some serious momentum. Now, did you see those receivers after the game? How happy they were, how fulfilled they were. This is the stretch run, baby. The numbers were absurd. Let's take a look. 22 for 28, 315 yards, three touchdowns, a near perfecto passer rating. You can't play much better than that. And this was about more than statistics, people. This was energy. This is vibes around a team and a fan base yesterday. White gave a very frustrated group of Jets playmakers a chance to shine. Garrett Wilson, Garrett Wilson, he who says what he feels, hadn't caught a touchdown pass from Zach Wilson all year. How many did he catch from White yesterday? Two? Two tutties, baby! Gronk and, and uh, to use the parlance of Gronk and, and Tom Brady. The vocally disgruntled Elijah Moore scored his first touchdown of the entire season. The offense was ignited in a way that we've not seen this year. And I know it was against a banged up, banged up bear squad, I know. And I know there's a lot of work left to be done here, but there's no way the Jets turn back to Zach Wilson next weekend. There is no way. And that, it's just, I hope this is not a conversation people are trying to have. It's the Vikings ne next weekend, all right? You're in the playoff picture. And if you look at the bigger picture, Mike White doesn't need to put up those type of numbers every single week to give these Jets a chance to make the playoffs. If, if he's average, mid, middling, efficient, mistake-free. If he's a six, okay? If he's a six, he's getting the ball in the hands of a group of talented playmakers and uh, allowing a what can be a suffocating, solid-led defense the opportunity to do its job. The Jets are going to be tough to beat people. Mike, are we buying jerseys in mass? I asked Twitter. Go to Twitter at Up and Adam Show. Am I, are we, do I need one of these in my life? Are we putting him? Sorry to Tom Petty. We love you. But does Mike White not look like a great person to have her right here? For the rest of the way, I'm kind of in on what's going on. Uh, yeah, okay, let's move on to this. I don't talk enough Bengals on this show. I talk a lot of Packers, I talk a lot of Niners. I talk a good amount of Eagles, which I should. We don't talk the Cowboys enough, that's what everybody on Twitter is saying. But we t we don't, I don't think we talk enough Bengals, and there is an old saying about tigers, right? A tiger does not change its stripes. Welp, that's because they don't have to. Those stripes are versatile. Those stripes help them adapt to their environment and blend in, whether they're hunting in open grasslands like Shere Khan and Mowgli in the Jungle Book, or if they're in the forest with Ka, that snake that gave me nightmares, uh, as I'm giving you Jungle Book slash zoology lessons. And why? because this all applies to the Cincinnati Bengals. Yesterday, 20 to 16, they beat the Titans. This was a lesson in adaptation, in blending in. We know the Bengals can light it up and go toe to toe in a high flying shootout with anyone, but at Tennessee, down to March Chase, without Joe Mixon, against what might be, I think, the toughest, possibly grittiest team in the NFL, since he beat Vrabel squad at their own game. And just listen to what Zach Taylor had to say. You know, one thing this team took to heart was, was how physical they heard this game was gonna be. And, and that's a credit to Tennessee because that's how they play. But our, our guys answered the bell today, you know, and to hold uh, their, their lead back to 2.2 yards of carry and 38 yards for the offense to rush over 100 yards, um, for guys to step up and make one-on-one -on -one plays, for Mike Hilton to come off the edge and, and tackle that back one-on-one um, -on -one like he did, I thought was just a uh, tremendous team effort today and really proud of these guys. And he should be. That run defense, incredible. DJ Reader is back. DJ Reader, one of my favorite guys on that defense and on offense, front of the show, T. Higgins. He totally stepped up, returning. Think about this, he's going back to Tennessee. We've talked about him on, uh, at, with him on this show, 114 yards. Look at that touchdown, oh my God. This is such a fun game. 
fourth quarter score to help the Bengals get the win. Samaj P. Ryan, over 90 total yards and a score. We had a Trent Taylor and Trenton Irwin come up with big quest, uh, catches situation. And the defense, like I'm saying, magnificent. How do you hold Derrick Henry, like Taylor just said, to 38 yards? Uh, it's incredible. And let's take a look at some of the numbers, as we always like to do, because we like to support what we say with that and the playoff picture records here. The win moves the Bengals to 7-4. and four. So they're in it. They're in the playoff picture in a tie atop the AFC North. Why? Because the Ravens lost to Jacksonville and a mascot wearing a Speedo, which we'll get to. We spoke to the mayor about it, the mayor of Jacksonville this morning, about what were your thoughts on the Speedo. We'll get to that. Um, what I've talked about a lot about and last week about the tough schedule ahead, this gauntlet for this Bengals squad. Five of their six remaining games are against teams in that playoff picture, in playoff position. They've got the Chiefs, they've got the Bills, they've got the Ravens. This was a huge win that they needed, underscored by the way the Bengals got it done. They needed to find a way, they did, and now hopefully Chase and Mixon are back for their showdown with said Kansas City Chiefs next week. My last point that I want to make before we bring in James Jones to talk a little Odell, we'll talk receivers, we'll talk contenders to the Eagles in the NFC, uh, and we'll talk Packers, of course. The NFC is so much better than we thought it was going to be. A month or so ago, with preseason, all offseason, it was so easy to be like, man, the NFC is so well done. We were all acting like the disappearance of the Bucks, Packers, and Rams at the top of the NFC meant the conference was going to be in shambles. But what I think that we're seeing is we don't need Aaron Rodgers. We don't need Tom Brady. We don't need McVay to, poor McVay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my gosh, how's his jaw this morning? My goodness. Uh, we don't need them for the NFC to be fun, interesting, uh, appealing, and so forth. And guess what? Things might even be more fun because we're ushering in a new era. We've got the Eagles at the top at an NFL best 10 and one. Then you got the Vikings, that huge Thanksgiving night bounce back went over the Patriots. The Niners are red hot firing on all cylinders. Man, them adding McCaffrey is amazing. Jimmy, all those explosive weapons. Brady and the Bucks, I mean, they're lurking, of course. They'll be hosting, I mean, four Cowboys at eight and three. I'm so mad about it. But yeah, the Buccaneers will probably host a game. Uh, they're five and six, even after a horrifying loss that we'll get into with James Jones shortly. Then the Cowboys, who are looking more dangerous by the week. Are they adding Odell? They'll be over the top there. You got surprising Giants. You got the Commanders in the final wild card spot after winning six of their last seven. Nobody's talking about that. Commanders winning six of their last seven, and that means all four NFC East teams would be in the playoffs if the playoffs started today. Those top NFC teams had themselves a week, and I don't think it's this foregone conclusion anymore. The best teams in the league are living and paying rent in the AFC. Eagles, Niners, Vikings, Cowboys, all legit contenders. And the playoff race is going to be exhilarating. And I know McBride doesn't want to hear that because she wants to think it's the Eagles and everybody else sucks. But it's just not true as we look at the bracket as we head towards January. Uh, we do not have a James Jones live shot to show you. Instead, kicking the stigma today, Colts. Steelers, a little Monday night football. How about my Virginia sweatshirt? 